Uh, Lisa, if you wolf down so much food so quickly... You'll get fat. Ah! It's just this once! I eat a balanced diet the rest of the time. But you've been bolting down every core so quickly, I'm surprised you haven't inhaled your napkin. Maybe we're gonna need to rethink your stage outfit for the concert. Crap. I almost forgot about that. If you're worrying about us, you don't need to, you know? I know your mother promised she'd have dinner with us, but we all know she's a busy woman. And she said she'd try to make some time for us tomorrow instead. But still... It's not that it bothers me so much, but she sits on Thor's board of directors. Who's she meeting with that's so important she can't even clear a little time to see us? She got off the Lusitania already, didn't she? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to say. She's not out on a date with a gentleman or engaging in any lascivious behavior, if that puts your mind at ease. <sighs> that's not what I'm worried about, not even close. Honestly? Hearing she was seeing a man might even put my mind at ease. Alisa? Hey, Elisa. Oh, it's you. Sorry, were you worried? A little, yeah. Seeing you like that just kind of reminded me of that night in Nord. Oh, right. Oh, I'm so pathetic. I keep going on about how I'm going to be independent, but then I get all worked up over something as trivial as this. Seeing the city from above at night is really something, though. And to think, you got to take in a beautiful view like this every night growing up. Yeah, I guess so. It used to be my grandfather, my father, and my mother here. Then after my father died, Sharon joined us. But through the years, my family has always enjoyed seeing the lighted windows of Ruhr at night. Something that never changed, huh? I guess it is to you what Ymir's mountains are to me. <laughs> Maybe every family has something like that. Still, first my grandfather left. And now Sharon and I aren't here most of the time either. Mother just stays here, all on her own. Every time I think of that, I just feel like crying. 
It breaks my heart. I can't understand why she chooses to be so alone. I thought so. You're not just angry at her then. <laughs> well, she gets under my skin, that's nothing new. But if I was in her place, I don't know how I'd cope. I couldn't live like she does, losing herself in her work all alone with no friends or loved ones by her side. She wasn't like that before, back when my dad was still alive. She's always been a career woman, but back then she was kind, funny. She had this warmth, you know? But ever since dad passed away, she hasn't been the same. Work became her life. She pushed grandfather out as chairman, all for what? More work? I've never seen her indulge herself, not even once. If she isn't dining with some business partner, she eats nutrition bars instead of meals. Sharon scolds her for it, but... That's how she is. And that's why I'm scared. I don't want life to just pass her by. That's really sweet, Elisa. Ugh. Where did that come from? You're always looking out for the people in your life. Even when they get on your nerves, you still care about them. It's like how you and I were at first, or how you were with Laura and Fee. Heck, I still remember how you told me off for hurting my sister's feelings. You've been keeping an eye out for Milliam all this time, too. And you should know that we're all really grateful to you for it. Especially me. <sighs> I'm worried about what's happening here in Ruhr, too. This is your home, and your mother might be caught up in whatever's going on. I think we should look into it. What do you say? What? But with all our field study tasks, where would we find the time? Why not do it while we're out handling those? Making some headway is always better than making none, right? I mean, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Everyone else does too. Fee cares. So does Elliot. Machias does too. Even Crow's been concerned about you. We can use our time in the city to poke around and find out more about what's going on. You know, kind of like we always do. Well... If you say so, but I'll save the thanks for later. Hmm, I doubt Sharon will tell us anything, no matter how much we pester her. But I'll ask around and see if anyone I know has any idea what might be going on. It shouldn't be too late to give some of them a call, at least. All right, I'll leave the info gathering to you. Once we get our task list tomorrow, we can discuss how we want to do this. All right. Anyway, I think I'm going to start calling my contacts. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I were you, I wouldn't go around stroking girls' heads like that. I mean, you don't just go whispering sweet nothings into any girl's ear, do you? This isn't so different, really. Huh? Uh, oh, I guess you're right. Sorry, it's something I always did to my sister when she was feeling down. But now that you mention it, she did seem to resent it more as she got older. But when I stopped doing it, she called me insensitive and got all upset anyway. I think your sister and I would have a lot to talk about. But anyway, I'll see you later. All right. Seems 
like she's feeling better now. I just hope our efforts will turn up some good leads. Huh? Call functionality works here? I guess it would, seeing as we're right in the headquarters of the company that built these. Maybe it's the instructor. Hello. Reen Schwarzer speaking. Oh, good. It went through. Glad I was able to get your number from Milliam. Is this... Captain Claire? It is. I apologize for calling so late. Are you free right now? Yeah. What's up? There's something important I'd like to discuss with you. But it's a matter best discussed in person. Would it be possible for you to meet me in the city? Sooner is preferable. Like, right now? Um, would this happen to be related to our field study? Technically speaking, yes. But with the Provincial Army on alert, traveling in a large group would draw too much suspicion. That's why I decided to contact you directly. You are the team leader. People keep saying that, but I never recall agreeing to it. But, sure, I guess. I'll head out right now. Where should I meet you? Go to the upper level. On the south side of the elevated walkway, you'll see a bar called F. It's a quiet, upscale establishment. The perfect place for a private discussion. A bar called F on the south side of the upper level. Got it. I'll head there right away. I'll be waiting. I'm not on a schedule or anything, though, so there's no need to rush. You've got time. And by the way, I'd rather you didn't mention any of this to Elisa. Huh? Why? Because what I want to discuss with you happens to involve the Reinford Company. But I'll leave it to your discretion. Anyway, you know where to find me. It feels a bit cruel to keep only Elisa out of the loop. But it sounds like it's pretty important. I think it'd be better to go now and tell everyone else about it later. Huh. I need to leave, but I don't want to leave the front door unlocked. But if I ask someone to lock up behind me, they'll want to know where I'm going. I guess I might have to tell Elisa where I'm going after all. Will you be stepping out? Sharon? I couldn't even tell she was there. <laughs> There's no need to explain. That glimmer in your eyes tells me all I need to know. Not to worry, Master Reen. Your secret's safe with me. So enjoy your night to the fullest. Wait, what? You have a date with a fetching young lady, don't you? I'll make sure no one notices your absence. Especially my lady. Just be certain you're back by morning. I assure you, I'm not that lucky. I just got word that this acquaintance of mine was visiting Roar. And they wanted to catch up a bit, so I was going to slip out and see them for a little while. <laughs> Very well then. I'll lock up behind you. I'd also be glad to help you build an ironclad alibi. No one would think twice, even if you were to stay out all night. I appreciate the thought, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Anyway, I'll be back later. Of course. Take care. <laughs>